I have been looking forward to this. You know, I got to tell you something. Before I bring in Rohan Marley here, you know what? You know what? You know what? He, he, he's kind of like, he's kind of like the guy, if he sees Kane's kind of doing something a little bit kind of nutty, he'll go back in the DM and go, hey, we're not having that. We're not, ha we're, 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 we're not having that. We're not, take that down. You know, when Rohan says something to Big Sills, I'm like this. All right. You know, he's, he's somebody I respect and somebody that I love. He's one of my Kane's brothers. February 14th, One Love comes out. And the Marley family is not just, I'll tell you what, that brand, folks, what they have done, the kids have done with the brand, they have left them millions of dollars in the brand and what people think with Bob Marley. It's on everything, hats, shirts, coffee, everything. Most of the kids are independent and so well business people. Let's bring in the former Kane and my friend, Rohan Marley. <laughs> Rohan What's up, my G? <laughs> what up, my G? You know, you, you, you had to school, you had to school Sills a little bit a couple months ago. You were like, we're not having that. <laughs> well, you know how it is, man. You know, we you know, we gotta be positive with the guys because you know, during the middle of the season, we gotta encourage, you know, no matter wins lose win, lose, or draw, it's still a long life, you know. And you know, I mean, we didn't feel so good when we we got taken down by Washington. That was a big letdown for us. So we know what it's like to let down the our fans. But still, as a player, we got to go fight next week, you know? We Absolutely. Gotta, so we got to think about the player, too, and, like, what the player is going through after a game like that, the coaching. I mean, then to get bashed, it's, like, it's rough for them to, like, recover. It's, like, emotionally, you know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to teach these boys to come out of that, that slum but you, you can't even get a day to recover because when we played, we didn't have the social media. We weren't, we weren't like, so people weren't so intrusive into our lives. We, we, we read in the newspaper. That's it. But nowadays, everywhere you turn, this one's talking about you, like 5,000 people talking about one guy does and everybody sees it. You know what I mean? So we, we, we as Canes, we got to like, remember that. How about this Rohan? I tell people this, if me and you and um, Jerome and and uh, Sap and all them yeah. guys had nil, I'd have a pizzeria on every stand in South Florida called the Big Sales Pizzeria. And if we had social media, I mean, we were so ahead of our time if back we then. we had social Weren't media we? now, you know where I'd be living? I'd be probably living in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have on island if I had a social media back then. You did. <laughs> If they had free, what's that thing called they're doing now? Um, the nil. The nil. Man, I wish I had one of those. <laughs> but they used to they used to utilize me like as if I was somebody really special. You know, I remember, I'm like, wow, Rohan Marley, University of Miami, Bob Marley's son, Jet Man. I'm like, wait, I ain't even playing yet. I ain't getting all this publicity. <laughs> hey, Rohan, what was that like playing with that? With that name at Miami, I mean, you know, Rock played. Rock's know. been on the program a couple times now, right? And we love. I I, I love Dwayne. He's really great. I asked yeah. him about his famous dad, but your dad is an iconic figure in the world. What was it like for you? Was it a heavy burden playing with that name, Marley, when you, you were at Miami? Heavy, you know where the heaviness comes. The heaviness don't come from playing with the name Marley. The heaviness comes from your family upholding that lion order level of manhood. Like, like being a Marley is about being a lion. You're like, you can't be like just being out there all soft and shit. Because my brothers, pardon my French, I used to remember playing the game and I just couldn't like I could never let me let my brothers see me on my back. Like, I can't let my brothers see me defeated. You know what I mean? So it's like I I gotta be a certain way. I can't like on, on some punk stuff, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, hey, Rohan, I saw a documentary with your dad. And is it true that the family would play soccer and you guys, it was so competitive that you guys were all playing soccer and your dad would have these soccer matches and these sporting events. And it was so competitive that everybody wanted to win. I wonder how much of an impact that had on you. <laughs> 
All right. It comes from my dad, that winning thing. My brothers, right? They have a soccer team. We when they were playing, um, when they were they're musicians, they still are. Back in when I was young and we would travel together while I was trying to join them on the road, they had a soccer, a traveling soccer team. It's called Black My Story. They have never lost a game. <laughs> my, <laughs> my brothers Ziggy and Steve, like I remember being in London. And these guys, you know, they said, oh, yeah, Molly Brothers, we're going to pay you back for what your dad did to us so many years ago when our dad beat their team, you know. So we're going to play that same that same genre of team. I remember they were up 4-0 at halftime. My brothers, you know, remember, I'm the strong yeah. one. I'm, coming, I'm just done with UM. My brother Ziggy. All right, the, because we're playing with band members. We don't really have the <laughs> <laughs> and they got their team. My brother Steven, he takes off his shirt, he ties his head. <clears throat> I'm holding down the back. Bro, you hold down the middle. Ziggy, you're up front. I'm telling you, all we all I did was maintain the game in the middle because you know I can I'm fit, I'm strong, I can do that. Steven, nobody gets past him. He's the he's the original like defender. Like nobody gets past Steven, you know what I'm saying? And Ziggy is the original sniper. He's <laughs> fucking killer. Like he would take on 10 guys. Ah, ah, ah. That, so I, I I learned my toughness from my brothers and my uncle Richie. Them people like my, my family. Let me tell you something. I'm sorry. Yeah, my brothers, they're the original lions. Like, that's where it started from. Just up, just upholding that legacy from the Marley side, being like, just, you know, when we play football in Trench Town, Jamaica, we, j soccer, there's no like referee. <laughs> <There's> no <laughs> <laughs> These boys, they play like, you got to be able to move your feet up, up because they're slapping you. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there's no like foul. There's no foul in that. There's like you know when you play twenty one, there's no fouls. Like that's how we play football in Jamaica scrimmage. There's no fouls. You can't call foul. You you might get a handball because that's just not the game. But you can't call no foul. A hard tackle that man. Play a big man, big man game. Them say that's a hard tackle. Play ankles be jammed up. Your shins. Busted up, yeah, that's Jamaica. So that whole thing, that whole legacy came from that type of attitude from the trench tone games and them type of thing, you know. Let me ask you this here. Let me get bro, my you. I you. know oh, you ain't the only one, Dan. Don't feel like you was all um like that. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't the only one, Dan. Stop. Hey, hey, Rohan. Let me tell you something, man. Yeah. I think because of your name. Let me put this and up. I've told people this at UM, and I told Mario Cristobal this the other day. This kid, Rohan Marley, belongs in the Miami Sports Hall of Fame. Well, shit, I'm the first outside linebacker to lead the team in Tigers. What they waiting on? That's what I say. Ain't no other. What? What? I mean, what I need to do next I year? I'm voting. NFL. Is that the? Is that the thing? I'm, I'm a voter. Guys, these guys like to. These guys like to talk about NFL players. That that stuff don't wasn't that's. We talking about college. That's right, Mo Rohan. I'm a voter next year. Yes, and sir. You're on my you list. Put that vote in. No, you're on my list. And by the way, yeah, I just I said that to Mario. I said, dude, this guy was a ball player there, and he was an impact guy. I mean, national championships. He played with some of the greatest players of all time there, and led the team in tackles. When I played as a, as a redshirt freshman, Jesse Armstead, Michael Barrow, Darren Smith. There's only one person in front of me and was a safety. And then me, the fifth lead tackler, as a freshman. That was Terrace Harris, the fourth lead tackler, then myself. As a sophomore, I led the team in tackles. I even play all the games. You know what I'm saying? I don't play, I didn't play against Georgia Southern and Fam Union people. <laughs> hey, wait, Mohan, I gotta show Rohan, I gotta show you this. I did play against Joy Southern family. Rohan, I, I gotta play. show you this because That's I'm gonna let game. everyone see. I needed here. them stats though. Here. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know what? Can I tell you something about my rings? Yes, sir, Dan. I see you. 
You know what happened with my rings? Tell me. I, lo I lost one of them because in my whole movement, it got lost. This brethren that I went to school with, his name is Darren Kaplan. He was the first guy to like take me to Turnberry. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> <laughs> he picked me up one day in the circle by the union in his dad's Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> the first guy put me in a Porsche 911. I, I was like, whoa, big money guy, you know, big time guy, big family in the advertisement business. But one of my really, really close friends, he's, in a, he's a movie producer now. I lost my ring. You know what he said to me? Ro, how about this? I'm going to order your ring for you. <laughs> Are we going to reorder your ring? And I'm going to keep it in my safe. And whenever you need it, you call me and I'm going to give it to you and you send it back to me. I said, all right, Darren, deal. So that's the only time. I, whenever I need that ring, I call him. I said, Darren, can you send my ring? Use <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. it for whatever I'm doing and I send it back. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Rohan, what did yesterday mean to you? In your family, the celebration. Is it a celebration? Do you guys get together? Do you congregate together? Do you do you know, anything when it's when your dad's birthday you know, was yesterday? Do you do anything as a family to celebrate the day? Obviously, we do, but as a unit, and then there's so many things happening around the world, right? For instance, yesterday is a big day in my family. Always we celebrate, we have a live streaming concert out. out from my dad's house in Jamaica, the Bob Marley Museum, 56 Hope Road in Kingston. So that's always a great thing. It's at, it's absolutely reggae month in Jamaica as well as it is Black History Month all over the world. But it's reggae month in general. So we do a lot, a lot of things. We activate a lot of movements during this time. But as, as far as the day goes, family-wise, um, you know, it's kind of a uh, a sad and a happy moment, actually, you know, so we kind of, um, it's been so many years now since 36, my dad passed away, he's 36, he's now 79, so it's been a lot of years where, you know, so now we kind of, um, we take it for a day for ourselves where we kind of reminisce and do things independently in works with our father, with, with our father's life. Right now we have the One Love movie coming out. So yesterday I kind of, I was on, I, I, I missed your show because I was, I had, I committed to doing Drink Champs. I, I figured that I told everyone, I said, dude, yesterday was such a big day. And on February yeah. 14th, One yeah. Love's coming out. And right. I'm sure you're doing a lot of stuff for that movie yes, now. But me without, a, without like, like I do everything myself. So I kind of. <laughs> no planner, right? You just, oh shit. Oh shit. Like, oh, damn shit. <laughs> I, I doubled up. So, I, <laughs> like, I mean, that's why, you know, like, come on, like, it's just a day, you know? So, yeah. yeah, I did that yesterday. I was doing that. And then the Marley movie's coming out. We're doing a premiere here tomorrow in, in Miami. And I was, you know, my son's been handling that. It's like, we, we didn't have anyone uh, confirm a couple of days ago. Now we have 500 people confirmed. It's sold out. Nothing we, like, everything is rammed up. And my friends are just not getting back to me. Like, dude. I hit you guys first. Now, <laughs> now my son's like, Dad, we don't have any more seats. That can you still tell your friends stop writing to us? I'm like, dude, come on, bro. Just... <laughs> hey, I'm... hey, Rohan. Yeah. Have you seen? I mean, I'm sure you've seen it now. Has it? Were you? Is the family and you? Are you happy with the way that the movie's going to portray Bob? Well, Arthur? remember, you know, this is some. This is like a project, like orchestrated, built delivered by Ziggy and my, my family. So we're like, you know, we are very much on the set, very much, uh, it's like a movie done by the family family. Okay. Like this is like our movie, this is us. This is like, that's why you see us everywhere. That's why you see my brother Ziggy, cause he he's a screenwriter, director, producer, casting, uh, vocabulary <laughs> efforts. Uh, <laughs> It's like everything. Like this is it's one of those things where when we see Kingsley, we hug him, you know? Like yeah. when we see Lashana, we hug them because and all the actors, like a lot of the actors are, that were cast are, are members of the people that actually lived the life. My dad's family members, my the the band members' son are playing their their dad because they look just like their dad. 
And only we, we couldn't play our dad because, you know, you need to be a real actor for that. You know what I mean? But, but these guys were great first-time actors, a lot of Jamaican actors, a lot of, I mean, we, my brother would make sure to hire like 2,000 people in Jamaica during this film, you know? Like, so we, we huge for the, the country in regards to what we did for the country. and what You we, made it in a community movie, right? You community wanted the community movie. To Absolutely. Be this was like, it's the places we grew up. We went back there. It's like, it's real. It's everything is done the way my father would do it. It's a really a beautiful love story and, and, a, and a, be a beautiful musical journey. And what the attempt that happened to my this man's life, my father, who is a human being, but in our eyes, growing up as children, we saw him as Superman. So obviously, you know, when you told my dad was sick, I was like, sick? Like, what? You mean sick? You know, when you hear that your father have cancer, you're like, what does that mean? Like, not our dad. That's a Superman. You, nothing can happen to him. He's the greatest human being I ever met in my life. The, so how is this happening? You know what I mean? Because when my dad was ill, I never even knew he was ill until the day he left this earth. I, knew, I, I never had a, I, I, I had no idea about his injury with his foot. So over time in life, you get to learn these things about, oh, my God, really? That was one. That was because I was young. I'm nine years old when he passed away. So this movie kind of, kind of like, bring you back to that age. And man, I cried so many. Did it hurt? Was it hurtful for you to go back in time like that? Because I would well, think, yeah, yeah, that emotional, yeah, Rohan. Yeah, it's an emotional roller coaster for not just, but you, 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 you not for me, but you kind of. I hurt for my dad. You know, I, I cry for my dad because of what he went through in that time as a human being, you know, like, because all of us, like, it's like, it's like Warren Sapp trying to become a Hall of Fame football player. And then they bastardize him about uh, smoking herb or whatever, whatever they tried to say to bring him down. Like when he was on the pinnacle of his game, you know, I mean, he's doing so much came from Plymouth. You know, it's the same Ray Lewis. It's the same story of how they try to bash you. When, when you're only doing what you love and trying to bring people together. Now, of course, my dad is doing something way different, but emotionally as human beings, you know? So I relate to that stuff because I hear my friend's story. I mean, I, I, I see my friends go through these things. So when I when growing up as a man now, understanding like what those emotions are, I get the goosebumps talking about. It. That's why I cry in the theater because of what the assassination attempt. We can't believe they tried to assassinate your dad, his own friends. The people that he put food on their table because they're being manipulated by a system, you know, not 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 having the education to be like, yo, think for yourself, be yourself. You got to You think that's right. You know, that's what my dad speaks about in regards to every man has a voice inside to know right and wrong. He's speaking on these things, but he doesn't like to. My dad's not the people, the per type person to reflect on who did what, when you did. My dad, nah, it happened, it happened. You know what? And the guy, like, you show up and see my dad. My dad, shake your hand. Man, you listen, you fix your fucking problem because you got a problem. If you want to hurt another human being, not even me, that's a problem you have. You need to fix that. So that's my dad. My dad's not going to be like, oh, man, you tried to hurt me. No, no, my dad's done with that. He's healthy now. He's good. Yo, yo, man, fix You know who your dad me. is? You know who your dad is to me? Your dad is a musical Malcolm X. Rastafari. And the fact that he is a community man, he believed in his Jamaican heritage his his people he wanted yeah. that nothing but the best and yeah. the most important thing that i take from the documentary and our friendship is that his accessibility rohan you know the one thing about the marley's you guys are accessible i mean I mean, most families people, are not accessible that's our and dad man we learned that from him man. powerful your sisters you if, <laughs> just listening to all of you the impact that your dad had it's in your character I mean, we learned that from my dad because that's what we grew up so seeing. You know, we saw with our own eyes, like every day, the amount of people. So remember this. No one has, only people that ever gave my dad anything, right, are, you know, some people from Africa. The, um, obviously, the African heritage and the, the people from the, that had things. But in Jamaica, nobody gave my dad. Only one set of people would ever give my dad anything. And are the people from like nine miles. They bring in the yellow yam and they bring in farm food, what he eats. But everyone else is there because what my dad can do for them. You dig? So yep. no, was nobody bringing nothing to my father? You dig? Like ain't nobody thinking about his health. Ain't nobody. No, nobody. 
Did you have any animosity, Rohan, towards the Jamaican up? government? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I when they were taking from you guys all the money he was doing because you know what? basically it was a socialist mentality that they had with your family. That must have been tough and rough on you guys growing up. I had a lot of animosity growing up after my dad passed away because I saw all the friends try to take over his things. They came there with I'd like a they tried to run a coop on our family business and my dad's legacy and everything. Mama Rita had to really become a man that day because when they came over and said, oh, Mr. Tough Gun belong to us. This is us. We build this. Mama Rita had to come with a pickaxe stick and tell you, when you come in here, she, she had to become physical. And that's really how we had to defend our father's rights and legacy because there was a time when my dad didn't leave a will. They, the, the trust wanted to sell all his rights. We, the children, had to rustle up the money. We borrowed the money from Chris Blackwell. He loaned us the money, and we had to buy our rights back and then, in turn, pay him back that money. You know what I mean? So that's how we end up owning our dad's rights. It's not some free-for-all shit. So you had to pay for your name. We had to pay for our name because he didn't leave a will. We had to pay for it. That's so fucked up. And that's why we have to protect <laughs> it the way we protect it today because we built it. You dig? We we the children from 1981 until now. It's been Mama Rita, Sister Sidella, Ziggy, Stephen, Robert, Rohan, Karen, Stephanie, Sharon, Damien, Julian, all of us, uh, Kimani, uh, uh, Robert, every all 11 children were, had to be stewards of this. And that's why I played the way I play because I couldn't let my family name down. You dig? But on the other, like, my family's watching. Like, hey, what are you? It's like, you can't like you. I can't wear my jersey. Like I, I used to go to Rolex. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wait, okay. So wait a minute. Rohan, Ro, Rohan's gonna wear flip flops, but he gonna drop a rolly on you too, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we work for that stuff, man. You know, it's rewards. You know what I mean? People hey, 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 some like they, okay, people gift Rohan. you. People gift you these things. No, but Rolex, the strip club, I'm talking about. <laughs> Not Rolex, Rolex of Miami Strip Club. When we used to go to UM, we pull up at the Licks, man. Stop tripping. Don't act like you don't know. Well, anyway, well, hey, I went to I the Big Pony up and <laughs> yeah, I couldn't wear my I couldn't wear my Bob Marley shirt in the Rolex. <laughs> I couldn't. Wear, I had to be like, yo, listen, this is the hurricane stuff. I can't go in there with the Marley name like that. You dig? That's Rohan. Oh, man. That's Rohan, the Miami Hurricane. I love that. What about the game on Sunday? Who are you pulling for? What do you mean? What I'm pulling for? What? What? Niners, what Niners. Hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, let's do this. Where am I from? Jamaica. Where do I live? Miami. What division is Miami in? The AFC. Who's playing on Sunday? The Chiefs. What division they in? <laughs> the AFC. What division should I be in? The AFC. Why are you asking me questions? <laughs> it's the stupidest <laughs> question I've ever asked. <laughs> you can't beat the God of football. <laughs> you can't. Um, let me see. Who We got a hurricane over there. Bush? Yes. Who's a, yes. Right. Yes. We, I stay in touch with him from last year till now. But you got the most amazing football player to ever step on the football field as an orchestrator, as a winner, as a champion. He is the person like, you know, like how Jerry Rice went to Mississippi Valley, but he could have been a hurricane. Yeah. Same with Patrick Mahomes. Freddie went to Texas Tech. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. They, sh he, I mean, that's a. Oh, he could have went anywhere. He could have went anywhere. I don't like Texas Tech. Come on, what? <laughs> hey, in our day, just so what he's saying here, so you guys don't know that those teams were roadkill for us. Right, yeah, right. right. Road stat game, man. It's a hey, that's a stat game, right? That, that's how we say it. Stat game. That's yeah, a stat but, game. But this guy, like, so I always, you know. I worry about this for him still, right? I said, I hope he stays, like, whatever he does to, like, maintain this ability that he has, I hope over time he stays with it because, you know, you know, like, a shortstop, right? You know how a shortstop can get that ball to first base from his behind 
or a second baseman. He can get it from his behind, from his underarm, from an overarm, running left, running right. That's Mahomes, man. This man threw a perfect ball. Like, he knows how to, like a shortstop. He knows how to balance his body to get that. Oh, my God. I've never seen a player like this. I've ne- The closest thing I've seen to him, obviously, it's many dimension of it. All right. Uh, uh, Cunningham. Randall. 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 Uh, Steve Young. Yes. Uh, Michael Vick. Kaepernick. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me get to you. What are you talking about Kaepernick? Okay, I'll take that one back. Okay, all right, back. all right. Okay. Remember what we did to Kaepernick in the Super Bowl. Remember, I'm an AFC guy. Oh, that's right. That's, <laughs> oh, that's right. You're only, oh, I, I got it now. We only hang on that side of the aisle now. I got it. Okay. Listen, if Ray Lewis ain't playing for a team, if Warren Sapp ain't playing for a team, I ain't got no connection to nobody. <laughs> what I do have is players that I love. And most of the players I love play in the AFC, sir. That's right. So hey. I'm going with the Chiefs, sir. The god of football, the greatest player I've ever seen throw a football. Look, look. Um, the smartest person I've ever seen throw a football is Tom Brady. Yes. Well, you know what I mean? Come on. Let me go back, 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 back. I mean, I'm a Dan Marino guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm, I'm from the Dan Marino school yeah. where I, I used to go outside trying to do a quick release. You know what I'm saying? I used to be that guy, so. I'm a I'm a I'm a living fan of Dan Marino. So I grew up in this quarterback era trying to understand what, what our magnificent quarterback. And I've seen the evolution of quarterbacks because the evolution of the players, speed, strength, tenacity, you know, the game has changed. It's not so bang bang anymore. It's more like it's more about accuracy. It's more about get someone to the ground. It ain't more about killing them off like, like one time. Absolutely. I, I play the game. So uh, Patrick is who I'm going with, sir. I'll tell you, for, hey, Rohan, for you and for a guy like him, the thing that I love the most about Mahomes is his humility. I, I, I think he's kept it down. For a guy like you that has so much fame in his family and what you did as an athlete, how hard is it to manage that as, as a person when you – Your you, ego? You, because when they see you, Rohan – how People free am I on this program? I got to ask, Dan, how free am I on this program? How free can I speak? How free as you want. All right, guess what? I have a lot of trauma, right, growing up that I didn't know I had, you dig? So the trauma became ego, right? You know, they started, oh, he's so cocky. Oh, he's so this, he's so that. But you can develop an ego, not not an ego where you don't have humility, but an ego just in your own mind, you know? Yeah. And how to figure out life and who you are and what are you and where you come from and how are you today as a human being? Because none of that stuff matters. What matters is how you are today as a person, you know? And I remember I had to, I had to like, I tried mushrooms, man. And when I tried psilocybin, man, <laughs> I told you I was going to be free. No, no, listen, I, I, I battled depression. I tell you this, I tried psilocybin, and I must say to you, that allowed me to understand that only thing that matters is our present moment of how we're feeling in this moment. Because there's nothing I can do about the past, good, bad, or indifferent. The past, I can't touch it. It's in fact unfathomable. There's nothing I can do. I mean, it's just memory. So if I want to be sad, if I want to be happy, I can think of some things that happened a thousand years ago and go back to those emotions. You know, just like we talked about the movie. So I was, I'm, I'm, I learned to accept the emotion that I have in the moment. I'm happy right now. I'm so happy. I'm happy because I just had some coffee. I ate something. I, I have everything I want. In the moment, I had it. So I'm learned like to get rid of trauma, and that goes back to humility. It's being in the moment and understanding, like you talk about Patrick Mahomes and his humility. It's being in the moment and understanding your purpose. And I heard him say one very, very important thing, right? And it was the game before he he played the game he lost against Buffalo, and before he played against them the the second time, he at the end of the game. <laughs> He told the other quarterback, my guy, I play with him on Madden. He's my guy. I like him. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> I like him. Like him. He told him, hey, that was a bullshit call. <laughs> 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 he right said, on. 
He right on, Rohan. I, I just absolutely yeah. love you, man. I'll tell you this, just for me too. You know, you and I came from a program that when you were in those locker rooms, the person that I am 35 years later from where I was with Jerome Brown and all those guys and how crazy we were, they, Jimmy and those guys were talking about it the other day with yeah. Michael Irvin I played, and he's like this. Sills, from the guy you are then to the guy you are now, I said it's been a journey, man, because that course. guy was an asshole. And that guy was mean. That guy thought he was better than everyone. Yeah. It's taken me a long time, Rohan, to kind of take that jacket off and get to where I am today because it's when true. you're in that environment like that and you're that guy and you're young and you have that kind of spirit and you're around so many great spirited people kind and around so many people, guys who were like from Overtown, Liberty City, sure. and you're, you're from a broken home. And you're sure. there with these guys. It's trauma. Trust it, me. It we is. all have it. That should give you trauma, man. Trust me. I didn't know I had trauma. I mean, I but grew that up drove like, us, didn't it? You drove, but I didn't even know because I was nine years old. My dad, like, <laughs> I mean, come on, what am I supposed to? I need my dad, but I don't, I didn't have a replacement dad. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's some type of trauma that we got to, and then that we acted out and not even knowing why, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta, we gotta heal ourselves as beings, man. And learn to live as human beings in this planet and know that we're all brothers and sisters and we're here for each other. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like living where I live now. I went outside. Obviously, these neighbors didn't talk to me for a while, but one day I went outside, they were walking, like, Rohan, hi, Jamaica Irie man. Anything you need from us, we're right down the park. If you need a cup of sugar, I'm like, oh wow. <laughs> No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's nice to fucking, it's nice to like live amongst people, man. And I love, it's nice to like. like Are you kinder to people today? Am I what? Kinder to people today. I've always been a kind guy though. Like, so kinder, I will, I will say, I can't say I'm kinder. I'm saying I'm more myself. You know, I don't give one fuck. So, <laughs> so relative to how your your inter interpretation of me being myself, so I love you, man. You I tell you this, you find, guys, you, got, you, you had want. to have seen it. He texted. He he did. He DM. He goes, Dan, wait, we're Canes. We don't do this. Yeah. And I go like this. You know, if it's any other motherfucker, I'm not taking <laughs> nothing shit. But you know what? I love this guy so much. I'm not okay. Know. You know, he's one of us. <laughs> he's in the Jerome and Michael Irvin and all them crazy ass mother. You know who's like okay? I'm gonna go here with him. <laughs> and you know what? I, Rohan, I'm so excited about this February 14th movie. It's, it's the most happiest day of my life to see my dad on screen and the way that the actors Kings Ben Kingsley Kingsley Ben. Benadir, um, the way he, he portrayed my father, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better actor to do this. No one could have done it any better than this guy. He really crushed it, like, wholeheartedly. Like, he he blew it out of the park. Absolutely. Really February, February 14th, One Love. Yeah, man. And Rohan Marley. We're going to be looking forward to it. Rohan, it's been a privilege. Done. The man, Rastafari, I love Maji. It doesn't I, really love, me. I love you to death. Kids, Rohan. love me for life, Dan. <laughs> love for life. Yes, Thank I. you, Rohan. Yeah, give thanks. Appreciate it. That's Rastafari great. Rastafari, I love. Yeah. Absolutely. Love you so much, man. Rohan Marley. God, I, I, I can't tell you what an important person he is to the University of Miami and a dear friend of mine. We'll reset. Our friend Tone will join us. At 4.30. Hey, that, that's Tone's opening act. <laughs> Tone's like this. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell Tone, that's your opening act. He opened it. He, he, he's, he's your opening act, Rohan Marley. I don't know. What the hell else can I do here? All right. We'll reset everything. We'll talk about Jalen here coming back. Please hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Ha, 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 ha.